Good morning and welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron, our interactive Bible study conference line, a safe and sacred place where we gather from the north, the south, the east, and the west to worship in the study of God's word. Our prayer is by studying God's word, you will be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. As we, re- as we renew our minds, as we walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. This is Minister Brenda, your facilitator from Northern California, and we're leader led by Pastor Douglas Banks out of Columbia, Maryland. We're so thankful that you are joining us this morning. This morning is the first Thursday of the month, and on the first Thursday of the month, we get a word of exhortation, a word from the word from one of our leaders on this line, and this morning we have the pleasure of uh, Audrey Brooks out of Alabama this morning. Tomorrow is Friday. We have praise, prayer, and service on Friday morning. This Friday be led by uh, our leader, Sister Karen, out of uh, West Sacramento, California. And also on the first Monday in the month, which is this coming Monday, uh, the 7th, we will have pastor who is bringing his, his sermon. His sermon will be um, the River of Life, and he will also be uh, administering communion, uh, hosting communion on Monday. So we have a jam-packed weekend and, and Monday morning. Looking forward to all of you uh, returning on the line. Uh, this morning, I just ask you all, please keep your phones in mute while uh, Audrey is bringing her message. My computer is having a little glitches here. My network is down, so I don't have the capability to uh, mute you all. So please self-mute by putting star six or just muting your phone until uh, the end of the service. Good morning, Reverend Harris, who will be leading us in prayer this morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. We woke up another day. We are so very blessed and so very worthy. I ask, Lord God, that you just continue to be with us this day. I ask, Lord God, that you just let uh, your anointing spirit just fill the houses and hearts and minds and bodies of your people. Thank you, Father, for another day. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for those that have come on this line, for Audrey that's coming on this line right um, right now to share a word with us, Lord God, because we need you for every single thing. There's nothing we can do without you. We, you, You are the reason that we breathe. You are the reason that we woke up. You are the reason that we have life and that we also know that you are the goodness the graciousness, the peace, the love, the compassion, the mercy of our lives, Lord God. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done and all that you will do. We thank you for being our provider and for being our peace and for being our healers and for just being there for us each and every day, Lord God. And I ask, Lord God, that you continue to just bless us and each and every member of our families, wherever they may be in the world. We ask, Lord God, not only over our uh, blood relatives, but also, Father God, for those that are spiritual brothers and sisters, wherever they may be. We ask, Lord God, a blessing for over those that cannot and do have not found you, don't know in the darkness of the world what's going on, those that are broken and those that are lost. So, Heavenly Father, just continue to walk with us, continue to guide us, continue to keep us, Lord God, in your care. And we will be so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, for you alone are worthy, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, to just be with Audrey as she comes to you right now, as she comes to us, give us a word of exhortation, that, Lord God, it may enter our hearts and our minds, because everything that you do, Lord God, we know it's perfect, and we know that it is because you love us, you are giving us guidance and direction. So, Father, bless us one more time, Lord God, this day, all the days of our lives, that whatever happens, Lord God, we know that we will be with you, and we are thankful, we are grateful, and we, Lord God, have, have so much love, and, and we thank you for your mercy. I, I just thank you tremendously, always for your mercy and for your grace, that we, Lord God, may become and be all you have sent us to be. And we ask you, Lord God, to just continue to bless our homes, our children, our families, and bless even bless our friends and our enemies, that they may find you, Lord God, before it's too late. Let you let, let you always be the, the light in the darkness in a broken world. We praise you, we thank you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Audrey? 
Good morning. Thank you, Reverend Harris, for opening us in prayer and lifting me up also. I'd like to say, first of all, good morning to Pastor Banks, also Minister Brenda, and all of the other leaders and my brothers and sisters in Christ on this line. I want to thank God for the gift of this opportunity to speak a word from him to his people. I don't take it for granted. I, I, I recognize it as an honor and a privilege. So, Heavenly Father, right now, I pray that every word that is spoken from my lips are not mine, Father, but only yours, Father. I pray that your Holy Spirit will just take possession of me. And, Lord God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable, Lord, and pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen, amen. Today, I want to speak to us on the subject of prayer and worship, Christian disciplines. When we think of the word discipline, I don't know about you, but a lot of times my mind immediately goes to the verb, the meaning of discipline as that to correct or to punish or chastising. You know, when our children have done something uh, that's contrary to uh, what we asked or expected, they're chastened. We have to discipline them in that way. And God does the same thing to us as Christians. But I want us this morning, when we think of Christian discipline, I want us to think of the word discipline in the form of the noun. And it means to teach, to train, or to instruct. And that's how I want us to look at prayer and worship this morning. Prayer and worship are two very important routines or disciplines in the life of every Christian. And in life, there are some things that just go together. When we think of one word, immediately something else comes to our mind. Just as peanut butter, when we say the word peanut butter, we think of jelly. They go together. Ham and eggs, soap and water. And that's how prayer and worship should be. When we say one word, prayer, Worship should immediately come to mind. Prayer and worship make up the heart of the Christian's devotional life. And prayer and worship are just essential practices for us in order to have a close relationship with God. Prayer and worship will lead us to develop spiritual maturity in that relationship. But, you know, we as Christians, sometimes our prayers are nothing more than a checklist of requests. God, you know, do this. I need this. Lord, please. And then when we think of worship, a lot of times we think of worship that it only happens in church, in church. This morning... When we look at prayer and worship, even though those two practices go together, they are very similar, there are some differences in prayer and worship. And yes, when we pray, we worship God. And when we worship, a lot of our songs or psalms from David are words are prayers that we are singing or saying to God. But let's first look at prayer. What exactly is prayer? 
I want to say to us that prayer is our lifeline. Prayer is how we communicate with God. Prayer is our communion with him. It is the means by which we talk to God. And prayer is not optional. I got to look in that book. Again, it is essential in the life of a Christian. It's prayer when we go to God in prayer. It's prayer that moves those mountains that are in our lives. It gives us strength for those struggles, those trials and tribulations that we go through. Prayer helps us when we are tempted and we know that we are tempted daily, we are tempted moment by moment. So when we go to God in prayer, it helps us to defeat and say, Satan, get me behind us. And prayer also gives us peace, that peace that can only come from our Savior, from our God, from our Lord. And it is in prayer that we see what God designed for us to do, what we ought to do. And when he reveals that to us, we should do that particular thing and nothing else. In today's culture, we have, oh, uh, one of my, my readings says that there are about half a billion self proclaimed charismatics in the world. That's a large number, 500 million people. And that many of them, they teach and follow what's called prosperity gospel. And it's this name it and claim it kind of deception that they preach and teach. For them, when they think of prayer, they think of prayer as a personal force, a personal force that brings us whatever we want. They see it as a creative force. It's a power. It's an energy by which we can attract any object or any experience or situation that we want. They tell us that it's like this. First of all, we need to know what you want. Believe that you will receive it and visualize it or picture it that we've got it. And then just speak it into existence. So those are the four steps. But that's their essential principle of prayer. Just know what you want. That's where it starts. And if you don't know what you want, it's not going to happen. It won't get off the ground. Believe it and receive it. Visualize it and it's just going to pop up when you speak it into existence. And it's called the law of attraction. You'll attract what you create by your faith, expressed in words. In a sense, that's how they pray. One writer said, it works every time. Just place your order. You know, it's not like we are at McDonald's when we pray. We're not putting in an order. We are before our holy and mighty God. In fact, those charismatic Christians are telling us that when we pray that way, we can shift the entire universe and make all of our desires happen. Can you imagine that's how millions of people are being taught to pray all around the world? Decide what you want, believe it, and you're going to get it. Speak it into existence. And their prayers are just a list of material things, health, wealth, success, prosperity, privilege, In their prayers, there's nothing about the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, purity, humility, or the brokenness that we come before God with. But if we as Christians want to know 
what prayer really is, we have to turn to God's holy word. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Matthew, the book, chapter 14. And we see in chapter 14, verse 13, it says, and I'm quoting, when Jesus heard it, it's speaking to when he heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded in prison. He departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. God's word. This is just one example that Jesus was taking a step back to seek God. And in Jesus' life, when he walked the earth, he was God himself. But he made prayer a priority in his ministry. So what does that tell us we must do? We must make prayer a priority in our lives. We can find other examples in God's word where he prayed. God was, Jesus was going through, he was in distress. He was in distress when we see him on the Mount of Olives before he was being arrested. He had just finished with his disciples being with them, and he had gone to the Mount. In Luke 22, verses 39 through 44, we see these words. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. Verse 40, when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So if Jesus sought his father in prayer and help when he was in distress, I dare to say, brothers and sisters, on this line, we all should should seek our heavenly father in prayer earnestly when we are in distress. And I have another example of prayer. I have several. In Luke, we see where Jesus prayed before he was making an important decision. Jesus had to choose 12 disciples. And so in Luke, it says that now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray. He went alone, and he continued all night to pray to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. So Jesus in that scripture set an example for his disciples, and also of us, of how we should pray before making decisions. And one more example that I'd like to put before us this morning is from Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 6. And he says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. And he goes on to say, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows 
the things you have need of before you ask him. And he tells them to us in this manner, therefore pray. And he prays, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, we see, prayed constantly. He had a strong relationship with his father. So Jesus went to God for every situation that he faced, knowing that no request was too small for him to bring before God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So I posed the question to us this morning. What is the true purpose of prayer? Is it to get us what we want? Is the true purpose of prayer to shift the cosmic order? Is it to manipulate God for the purpose of giving us earthly material, worldly possessions and privileges? Simply to feel our flesh. Is that it? And I want to declare to you in all caps, the answer is no. Prayer brings us in the presence of God. And prayer directs our focus. We put our focus on him, on God. And prayer helps us to recognize our place and our purpose. We come before him humble, servants, beggars, knowing that we need to align our prayer and our heart with God's will. Thy will be done. And so I said we were going to look at prayer and worship. Now I'd like for us to move on to worship. What is worship? Most of us have heard the word worship since we were children. We, we've we heard it in conversations. We've heard it in testimonies and songs and scripture. But have we really understood what worship means. Psalms 96 verse 9 tells us, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Amen. Worship is not that slow song that the choir sings. It's not the hand clapping, moving song. Worship is not what I put in the offering basket. Worship is not volunteering at the church in the children's church or volunteering, doing things around. Yes, all of these are expressions of worship, but they don't define what true worship really is. And we can find several definitions of worship, as I told you, but worship is when we go before God, Webster has a wonderful definition. It says that worship is when we go before God and we lift him up. We come before him in honor, to honor him. And we come before him to honor him with our extravagant love and with submission to him. True worship is over-the-top worship. It's defined by the priority, you all, that we place on who God is in our lives and where God is on our list of priorities. True worship is a matter of the heart and it's expressed through our lifestyles of holiness. Worship, just like prayer, is a non-negotiable priority for 
the Christian. We worship God. Why? We worship him because he is God. God loves us first, according to 1 John 4 and 19. So if he loved us, it is appropriate that we go before him and thank him for all the things that he has done for us. But our worship is shallow if we go before him just to acknowledge God's wealth. Psalms 96 and 5 through 6 says, For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens and honor. God made the heavens And verse 6 says, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So in other words, our worship must be towards the one who is worthy simply because of his identity. God is omnipotent. That means that he is all-powerful. God is omnipresent, he is everywhere, and he knows everything. He is omniscient. He is, he knows it all, as I said. His knowledge is all encompassing. And so not, we don't worship God just because he's able to meet our needs and answer our prayers. You know, if God only met our needs. Would we continue to worship him? Would we continue to feel that he is worthy? Worship, as I said, is having that extravagant, exuberant love for God. And I declare to you all today, if our lives is not lived this way, in submission to our Lord God, then we should evaluate our expressions of worship so that when we go before him in prayer, singing, declaring, and giving, that we will give the Lord the glory due his name, Psalms 96 and 8. And the promise is that when we worship God like this, He will come and he will commune with us. And above all, God will respond to our worship by making our hearts like his. So yes, there are similarities between prayer and worship and also differences. Our goals are different. In God, when we pray, we are speaking to him. We are communicating to him in communion. And we, our goal is to speak to him and also to hear him speaking to us. And when we worship, we don't do it just in the church. We can do it anywhere. So I thank you all for listening to me this morning, and I pray that something that was said will cause someone to understand what prayer and worship means as a Christian discipline in our lives. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity, God. And Lord God, I give you all honor I give you all praise, I give you all glory, and I say hallelujah to your name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And amen again. Let the church of God say amen to that. Amen Amen. and hallelujah. Oh, be thou glorified, oh God. Uh, We thank you, Lord. Uh, We bless the name Jesus for this word that has gone before the congregation this morning, we want to uh, lift up our uh, sister Audrey. Uh, I understand she's 
Anne's biological sister, and she's all of our sister uh, because I believe in the blood uh, that makes us all blood relatives in the spirit, even the blood of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful word the Lord has given her to share with us uh, that when you pray, uh, I have some notes here, Audrey, that when you pray, you need to pray in worship. Uh, and this involves Christian discipline. That Christian uh, discipline, uh, this is where we get the word disciple. You cannot be a disciple without discipline. Uh, so they do go together, prayer and worship. This is devotion to God. I I really appreciate that prayer, uh, your uh message to us, that prayer without worship, this is what I heard, that prayer without worship is thinking sand, that, that prayer without worship is uh, separated from communion uh, with God, uh, understanding that we have no force in ourselves to create, but what we have is connection with the creator. And so when we are in communion with the creator, he is able to create all things through us. Uh, he can establish what he will through us who worship him in spirit and in truth. And I, I like the examples from the word of God that the prayers of Jesus uh, were based in worship, in worship of our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed uh, be his name. Jesus hallowed his name and taught us that this is what humans need to do. Uh, you brought us to the purpose of prayer. And the purpose of prayer ultimately is communion with God, uh, our spirit, soul, and body. The purpose of prayer is worship. The purpose of prayer is loving and trusting God. And our prayer begins with who is this king of glory? The Lord Almighty, strong in battle, majestic with beauty and great love. This is our prayer, communion uh, with the Most High. I love the message today. Uh, I pray it has gone forth in power uh, throughout this line. Uh, and God bless you, Audrey, for bringing it to us this morning. Anyone else? God gets the glory. Good morning, this is Cynthia, and I would like to thank you for your wonderful message this morning. This morning, I have a better idea of what prayer, worship, and discipline should be like as a Christian, and I appreciate it. I appreciate your message. Thank you very much. This is Deborah. I just wanted to say thank you. you I mean, prayer and worship, you cannot have one without the other. And I'm just thanking you that because you just re reminding us, you know, that prayer gives us strength and, you know, and it helps us defeat the devil. And I thank you so very much for putting that memory in, in my brain. Thank you. Amen. God gets the glory. Thank you. Good morning. This is Gloria. And thank you, um, Anne, I mean, uh, Audrey, for um, – this message is beautiful, and and it reminds us how important our Christian discipline in prayer and worship is. You know, we we need to be able to discipline ourselves um, and not let the outside world distract us from prayer and worship to our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much, and thank you for the scriptures and reminding us how Jesus um, was our example. I mean, he, he, his whole life here was an example to us, and those scriptures remind us of that. Thank you so much. Lord bless you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. This is Sister Veronica. Miss Audrey. Uh, thank you so much for that powerful message. What I heard uh, in everything you said that prayer is our, it, it tells me 
I'm dependent on God. I go to who I depend on, who I need to make it during this time. And I love what Minister Brenda said about the example Jesus gave us, how we he went away to pray because he depended on the Father to to take him through everything, to, to be effective, to be strengthened, and then he gave him the praise. We give him the praise. We worship him. We praise him. So I heard uh, I pray because I depend on God. So thank you so much for reminding me that my prayer life is just not words, that I go to him because I have an expectation, because I depend on him. He's our all sufficiency. So thank you so much for that powerful word, and may God continue to bless you richly. Amen. Good morning. This is Reverend Harris. I just wanted to, uh, like, sort of pretty much okay that. Um Prayer, prayer is my lifeline to God and our lifeline to God. When we pray to God, we're connected with him. And I want to thank you, Sister, for that powerful message and for all that you have shared with us and reminded us that when we pray, all things are possible because God is our lifeline. That's, that's our lifeline. And 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 I'm just thankful, and I want you to know that I appreciate every word that you said because it is through him and through prayer that we are connected to God himself. And that is something that's very important for all of us to remember as Christians. When we pray, God hears us through his Holy Spirit. He hears us. And we have to always remember and no matter what's going on around us, God is always there for us when we pray earnestly and honor and worship him. He's always there. So thank you for that word. It was wonderful, and it was well received. Thank you. Hi, this is, Mo- this is Monique. I haven't signed on in a while, but I just wanted to say, Sister Audrey, that word was timely. Um, even this week I had some I felt oppressing issues. Uh, that was messing with my morning, uh, uh, you know, meditation time, but I realized that I had to discipline myself. So I appreciate your word today. Um, very timely, and I miss you guys, and hopefully I'll be able to sign on a little more often, but <laughs> work calls. So bless you all, and thank you for that word. Hello, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you, Flavor Right. Thank you for the word this morning. Uh so timely, so timely, something that we all need to hear and to be reminded, to be reminded what worship and prayer is. Thank you. And I just want to say that Jesus prayed. If Jesus prayed, don't you think we need to pray? If Jesus worshiped his father, do we need to worship his father? The answer is yes. And say, uh, you reminded me that when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus didn't ask God to take him down. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And just that instance right there is just the one that says, it's really, prayer is not, prayer is not a wishing will. God is not somebody that you say, I wish I had a new car, and I want to thank you for that. I love you, Audrey. Good morning. This is Tabitha. I just wanted to say thank you for that awesome word. Um, I wanted to also say that I know when I started out as a Christian, I used to just pray alone. And when I say alone, that was all I did was pray, and I worship on Sunday morning. But um, but for the most part, I will never forget that analogy with the peanut butter and jelly because I love peanut butter and jelly. And when you eat peanut butter, it's really dry by itself, you know. But when you add the jelly, that's when you start, your taste buds start to really do something. And that's the way I believe prayer and worship actually works because back then when I prayed, I really didn't see anything or hear from God or anything like that. But 
when I added the jelly and I actually really started disciplining myself and making that a part of my everyday life, I mean, I started seeing miracles and things moving in my life. So that was just amazing. So now I know how to describe prayer and worship to people who only pray and hopefully will start to add the jelly and start to worship in their lives. Thank you. Good morning, Audrey. This is Karen, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, giving me a new definition or a, a complete definition of the word discipline. I loved it because I'm one of those that only thought of discipline as the verb and never uh, as the noun. But now that I I hear it and I see it and I understand it, and I'm so thankful to the Lord for giving you uh, that word this morning. It was fantastic. And I, too, have taken notes. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen, amen. Good morning, Audrey. It's Gail. I just want you to know that you were over the top, way over the top this morning uh, with prayer and worship, a priority. I feel like I've already been to church for this week, uh, and you're putting the the words and the knowledge about what we hear so much uh, on the prosperity gospels of the know what you want, believe and receive, and, and asking for, for different things and, and how you made all of those things so deliberate. Your tone was very even and direct. Uh, you brought joy. You brought smiles to your message. Uh, you were just simply wonderful. But much more than that, your words were so good. So God bless you and keep you and keep it up, kiddo. Thanks. Um, God bless you this morning, Sister uh, Audrey. It was truly a blessing to hear your voice this morning, and that is so true. Prayer and worship go hand in hand. And God bless you. Everything has already been said. God bless you again. Love you so much, my sis. May I say at this time, I thank each and every one of you for the words that you have said to me. But but God, but God, it all goes to him. And I thank you all so very, very much. Amen. We get that, but uh, we also know that iron sharpens iron and that God uses each one of us to bring some of his light uh, into this bonfire of assembly. And so uh, each time we allow the Lord uh, to use us, it glorifies God and it lights up all of us who are committed to the love of God in Christ Jesus. I just want to agree for a minute with uh, uh, your evaluation of the prosperity uh, preaching that lifts up God as a, uh, a cosmic waiter. You just come before God with your request. I need this. I want that. I'd like to have. Would you give me? Uh, and and God will supply it because he's a cosmic waiter who just is sitting around waiting to give you what you need. And that's insane. When you try to approach God without worship, without understanding who he is, and in the very presence of he who has created all things, uh, whatever you uh, think you are requesting is null and void. Uh, it is God who creates, not us. Uh, so we, we thank you uh, for all that you uh, brought to us this morning. If there is no one else uh, that wishes to make a comment about that wonderful and powerful word, uh, I would ask that uh, Minister Brenda close us in prayer. I just wanted to add one thing. This is Tabitha again. Prayer and worship, and I think the cream on top is just fasting. So I just wanted to add that, and that's all. Thank you. And good morning. I just wanted to add, too, this is Adrienne. Oh, I think you just nailed it when you said you don't have to keep repeating over and over what your desires are because God already knows what's going on. We just we bring it to him, and we believe it. I appreciate your words. Thank you.
Uh, Minister Brenda, are you available to close us in prayer? Okay. Awesome. Yes, I am. Again, Sister Ashley, thank you for your words of wisdom. Uh, thank you for being a obedient servant leader and doing what God has told you to do. So, Father God, I thank you this morning coming humbly before your throne of grace and mercy. Thanking you for the message that has gone forth this morning boldly and mighty, Lord God. I pray that the message that was heard will be well received in people's hearts, Father God. Give them the ears to really hear the truth of what was said, Father God. Reveal it to them, Father God. Unveil their hearts so they can respond to the truth that will set them free, Father God. Father, bless them and manifest your glory in the midst, in the midst, as you pour out our, your uh, spirit in great measures on our hearts, Father God, as we continue to do the work that you have called us to do. Lord God, you're just such an awesome God. You're so worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Father God, we bow down to you, Father God, because you are the great I am, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are a kinsman and demon in the person of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God. Lord, let there be signs, miracles, and wonders that follow us as we are obedient unto you. We thank you for this day and for everyone that's on this line, Lord God. Oh, let them continue to be your flock, Father God, led by the great shepherd. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. 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 Be blessed, blessed, beloved. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day again. Love you guys. God bless everyone.